Hey guys, welcome to That Pebble Show. Dan here. Mick here, hello. And today we're talking about tape echo machines. Call the police. Shouldn't you guys be social distancing? Uh, yeah, we should, and yes we are, which is why I've moved a bunch of stuff back here in order to uh, carry on making content. The good news is Dan and I got a bunch of stuff in the can before the social distancing measures were put in place. Uh, there's about six weeks worth of stuff, uh, one of the videos of which you're about to watch. Our thoughts go out to anyone and everyone affected by coronavirus, whether that's physical, mental or financial, or indeed any combination of that. Our hope is that by the time a lot of people watch this, it'll just all be a horrible memory. Meantime, let's get on with the show. Hey guys, welcome to that panel show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Man, killer. Righteous noises. Are you all inspired after last night? I am. Uh, Dan and I went to watch Phil X and the Drills <laughs> in Bristol last night and just awesome. I'm going to be buzzing off that for a long, long time. He is rock. He is rock to his very core. It was a, it was a wonderful experience. Anyway, uh, SG with the P90. Is it P90 or P100? Uh, it's P90 in a, in a humbucker sized thing. Okay. So whatever yeah. that is. Phil X is P90, SG, couple of marshals, and the truth. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like his picking is off the scale. Anyway, um, and the return of the DGT, Daniel. Very nice. Um, it has been missed. It, yeah, I lent it to um, Simon, who's lent, loaned me the old Strat. And he's like, oh, okay. He's like, ah, you can have that back, mate. <laughs> right, really? Uh, he's okay. Got, he's got loads of guitars, but um, right. yeah, it's sounded majestic today. So happy days. Yes. Um, and that's a very nice hoodie you're wearing there, Dan. You like this? Are you not a little bit warm? No, you're kidding. <laughs> I've been, I've been living in England since 2002, so I've basically been cold for nearly 20 years. Okay. Uh, so this is lovely. For those of you who don't know, Dan is from Australia, where it is somewhat warmer. Not only Australia, but Brisbane, Australia, where it's kind of warm. Yeah. Um, anyway, nice because tone, that. Uh, that Pedal Show hoodie's there, now available at that Pedal Show store. It's really nice. Fleecy, fleecy inside. <laughs> I f feel like I'm getting a, a hug yeah. from... Just don't steal home. anything from me if that's all right. Okay. All right. Um, tape Echoes. We're doing this because we're going to do a series of videos on Tape Echoes. Um, regular viewers will know that um, Dan is a long-time huge fan of Tape Echo. I'm a sort of recent convert. Somebody's phone is on. Be mine, won't it? Liverpool. Somebody from Liverpool is trying to call me. Okay. I wonder if it's yeah. uh, Paul McCartney. Got to answer it. Yeah, Dan, a long time fan of tape echoes. I'm a recent convert, having recently picked up the full tone tube tape echo. And one thing that's kind of really hit me anyway in recent times is why don't any of the normal pedals sound like a real tape echo? Yep. Which is going to be parts two and three. Today, we are literally going to listen to the full tone tube tape echo which is a remake of the maestro ep2 mm -hmm. so the all valve one not the ep3 right. the solid state one and over there dan we have the uh, original space echo the re201 uh, and then we have the echo fix which is the uh, efx2 i have my trusty old high watt custom tape echo which i've managed to 
I looked at one of those on Soundcast the other day. They're a lot of money. They are. They are. Yeah. And yeah, you'll you'll, you'll find out why. It's got a couple of tricks up its sleeve. Yeah. But to find one that's working. Yeah. Is rare. <laughs> Yeah, that's the that's the issue, isn't it? Which we'll we'll touch on no doubt throughout. So today's show is we're going to focus purely on the tape machines. We're not going to compare to um, normal delay pedals as such. However, we do have a Boss DD two hundred just to remind us and keep us in the room of what a normal standard digital delay sounds like. Yes. But parts two and three, which will come up in in coming weeks, will be a deeper dive on the tube tape echo and the various echoplex types, mm -hmm. and a deeper dive on the RE two hundred one and the various uh, things that are kind of more in that in that vein. So yep. we're talking Strymon Volante, we're talking Boss RE20. Uh, on that side, on this side, we're talking um, Catlin Bread Belly Pop Deluxe. Mm -hmm. We're talking the new Ape from J Rocket. We're talking again Volante um, and some other things. Cool. Yeah. Lovely. Where should we start? Should we start here? Yeah, let's start there. So this is all tube, as in the uh, tube preamp. Yeah. Yeah. It's a revelation, actually. I've never had one before, never really listened to one. Um, Matt Schofield is a big fan. Lots of people are big fans. John Mayer likes it. Go onto the Full Tone website, you'll see the list of users. Mm -hmm. And surprise, surprise, Daniel, have a go. So we don't have a camera on the on the TTE. What I'll do is I'll explain what's happening while we're doing it, and Simon will do some um, detail shots one second. a bit later. I dropped my magic pick. Ah. I have it again. So Shane Paul Reed-Smith isn't here. Why is that? He does this thing where he'll get like the nuts from a guitar, plastic ones, bone ones, and the materials that he uses, mm -hmm. drops them on a table and says, listen to that. Listen to how they sound. Right. Listen to this plectrum. Yeah, yeah. Compare that to your average nylon pick. Yeah. Yeah. But we digress. Okay. Um, the point is they sound different. Yes, they do indeed. Yes. Uh, so Dan, I believe this may be the first time you've plugged into this. It is the first time. So the two amps today are the Marshall 50 Watt Plexi 1987X and uh, Two Rock Classic Reverb Signature. Running together sound like this. What, what are we hitting there? It, just 101. It's a pretty strong guitar That's sound. A strong guitar sound. <laughs> it needs to be fairly loud because we need to push it. Okay, so what you'll notice is um, I'm going to turn the TTE off. Okay. It's now in its bypass mode. And as you play, I'll turn it, I will switch it into the circuit. Okay. So even with the effect of the TTE out, i.e. no no delay on, mm -hmm. um, it changes the tone. Yep. Now we're going to go from that. I'll turn the echo volume down to zero so there's no sound of echo. Okay. So all you're going to hear is what happens when we turn the preamp of the tube tape echo on. Okay. Okay? Yep. And if we'll forgive our mic preamps just for a second, I'll, I'll give you an idea of, so the first knob on the TTE is called guitar volume and that's the preamp level, right? Right. So if you play, I'll just turn it down and up. Okay. Far out, man. That's amazing. <laughs> That's just a valve preamp. Doesn't it sound totally killer? Tell you what, as a point of interest, um, the, the 87X is a really aggressive sounding amp. And Dan and I have the treble channel, high treble channel, just kind of. It's, 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 it's touched on. Yeah. And, and it's on. Because it gets crazy aggressive. 
but with this darkening everything off and adding that extra gain, it becomes a, a much nicer thing. Yeah. So I, that turned up sound though. Isn't it great? Oh, far out, man. That's amazing. So let's set it. I'll just try and set it at something approaching parity. So if you okay. just play us up. And you can hear it really does change the fundamental tone of the guitar quite significantly, yep. which addresses, we'll, we'll get to this in the next show, but I was getting a bit annoyed with the Belly Pock Deluxe because it does that. Right. Hey-ho, it's supposed to do that. Even right. though the Belly Pock Deluxe is more like an EP3 rather than an EP2. Anyway, so let's hear some of this lovely uh, echo then. So you've got another, another couple of controls. One is the drive to the tape. Okay. So the effect is, level right. to the tape. Which is separate from the guitar volume. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll turn the echo volume up so you, you'll start to hear the delay and then I'll mess around with the um, drive level to the okay. tape. yep. And then in addition to that, you've got tone on the repeats. Oh, okay. Seems a skank. That's very cool. I didn't know it had a tone on the repeats. And then in addition to that, it's also got high speed and low speed for the tape. Okay. So I'm assuming um, the speed of the tape will affect the fidelity. It will. So the higher the speed, the more information you're getting to the tape. Could we try that? Yep. So I'll just um, what I'll do is I'll set it up uh, at this delay time, at a delay time. Let's arbitrarily put it there. Mm -hmm. By the way, to set the delay time, there is a manual slider which moves the record head <laughs> further away. We or... might get a close-up shot of that because it's yeah, such yeah. a great, great yeah. thing. So give us a give us a scan of that then, Dan. <laughs> and I'll just change it to high speed. Okay. Awesome. It's not a huge amount, is it? No. I don't. I didn't if you think go to, if you go to the longer delay time, the longer maybe. delay time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So to just to finish off on the on the tube tape echo, then let's add some um, L Grunge Tastic and just see what it does. So we've got um, the Metropolis Super Boost, a uh, Thorpey Warthog, and a DNM drive. Gany. <laughs>
Totally unfair comparison. All I did there was turned on the DD200, which is arbitrarily set to a standard digital delay sound. I turned the tone down a bit, tried to get the speed somewhere similar. Mm. Not exactly the same, but I think what you hear straight out the bat there, straight out the gate, is a radically different experience. Yeah. So that's what we're going to get into in the next uh, in the next show. Yes, okay. Just want to try one final thing. I want to turn the... Um, uh, delay time down to low and just see what kind of a slap back we get. And I'm going to use the preamp in the in the full tone. I'm going to use the preamp in the full tone to get me overdrive. Yowza. Totally killer, isn't it? Very special. It's a very, very special thing. I mean, you can see why the tape echo and an amp was all you needed. Mm. Because you could get so much overdrive extra from that. Yeah. Just from there. And it obviously into an amp that's crunching more. So you've got uh, an extra uh, foot switch in for like, the playback and echo off. Yeah. So that you could right, kick it in and off. But you're yeah. st still always going through the preamp, though, right? Yes, that's yes, what that's right. for. Okay. I believe the the um, effect on and bypass switch puts the preamp on and off. Right. And then that takes the effect out, but leaves There's the preamp, preamp on. on. Okay. I, I don't hundred percent know to be honest. And then um, uh, Mike at Full Tone has done various upgrades to it over the years. This is about serial number eleven hundred for anyone who's interested. Right which was kind of where he made the first big changes. And then after that, more changes have been made over the years to change the tone of it and offer extra functionality and okay. stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things, you switch it on and you can be slightly underwhelmed because you're like, hmm, it's knocking off a bit high end, mm. really changes the tone. Then you play for two or three minutes and then you turn it off, you're like, oh no. <laughs> right. <laughs> I can't I can't unhear that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm, I've become completely addicted to it. So so from that, we're already hearing the importance of that preamp. Yes. Right? And how massive that is yeah. to sort of everything to do with it. Not only just the tone that's going to the tape, but the, but the direct tone as well. Yeah. I mean, it is, we keep saying preamp. And you think about how fundamental a preamp is in a pedal, an amplifier, a recording device. Yeah. You know, it's absolutely fundamental to the whole character of the sound. And sure. that's what you're talking about, isn't yep, it? Yep, absolutely. It's it's a it's a big deal. Okay. So shall we move on from the tube tape echo then? I mean I'm I'm sold. Yes. <laughs> it, it hasn't broken down yet. And with 
massive respect to Mike and the people at Full Tone. I think it's built to not break down with the bearings and the tapes and all that sort mm. of stuff. So uh, it's ro- it feels robust enough. We took it to a guitar show, didn't we? We did. And Sounded epic. Stood it on the stage and uh, had it running. Turned it on this morning. It still works. I think that's pretty good. Magic. Magic. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, let's... Uh, if we have a look at... Um, so I've got three over here. I've got the Ari Tura one, which is, this is from the 70s. But completely reconditioned. Completely reconditioned. By our friends at Soundgas. Yeah. So one of the things that we'll hear, if I'll get you to play for a second, and what yep. I'm going to do, I'm going to switch between the the TTE yep. and the Ari Tura one. Okay. okay. I'm just going to play my blue guitar. This one, I need to change the strings on this. It's a bit... Um, a bit cranky. Hopefully this will be less cranky. Okay. Now this has a solid state preamp. There are a couple of different versions of the preamp. This is the one that I like, but have a listen to the difference. It's also multi-head, isn't it? This is a multi-head. So the, the, the Echoplex type ones and the tube taper, tape echo only have one, uh, one head. This has multiple heads. Yes. Can we just listen to one head for the time being just to get the... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just to get the comparison. Right, there we go. Cool. So if you have schwungage, yeah, get this in a nice place. Maybe that's a nice place. Who knows, Dan? <laughs> First thing you're hearing? Uh, first thing I'm hearing is lots more noise. Exactly, yeah. Um, and uh, the repeats go on longer. I'm just going to turn the repeats up in the full tone again, see how many repeats I can get in the full tone. Okay. Crazy cool. <laughs> So there's less fidelity. There's a bit less fidelity in this. In that. Well, there is. However, what I do have is EQ on yeah. the repeats. All right. So if I turn the treble up on the repeats. Yeah. Now, now play. <laughs> a little bit of warble in the tape there. <laughs> Fascinating, isn't it? The re- um, so the repeats die quicker in the TTE, i.e. they they degrade more quickly. Right, they go off into like saturation and uh, character sure. m- more quickly than that. Sure. Okay. Cool. Okay. So and you got preamp on there as well. There's a preamp on here as well. Yeah. So at the moment, this preamp is basically cranked. Oh wow. Okay. That's the What's, what, what the switch on the input there? What does that do? That just turns the echo off. Oh right. And what about on the output? Uh, this one here? Yeah. Uh, this is the, the output level. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. So the moment's on high. Yeah. And medium and low. Oh, wow. It's a glorious thing. It's an amazing thing. Now, the preamp in this is also really important to that sound. It's it's a lot noisier, obviously. Yeah. But it has, if I turn the echo off again, yeah. and then just play and switch it on and off. Let me just hear that with some grunge a minute. Okay. Okay. 
But he held the preamp fattens things up. I've forgotten I don't have a tone control oh, right, on right. my bridge pickup anymore. <laughs> so that sounded pretty good to me. Phil X would have liked that sound. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So this, there's something happening again in that preamp that imparts that tone onto the tape as well. Yeah. Um, and again, it's one of those things you're playing. It's like, you know, you start, you start it's, well, it's a bit noisy. You get the going, you turn it off. It's like, well, there's something now missing. Okay. Yeah. So I've always loved these for that. The other reason I love these is because it's got, you know, reverb, spring reverb and things in it as well. Can we just hear then the, the lovely multi-head yes. thing? Of course. So the other, yeah, so right. The other thing about this, you've got your slider yep. and the, the, it's the distance between the record head and the playback head. And, and that determines the length of the delay. Now I've got uh, three different playback heads in here. So I can go from So one, two, and so I have those three. Those are the three heads. Those are the three heads. Now after this, I get combinations of those heads. Keep going. Go for number nine, please. Number nine. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's going to be saying, "Why don't you have a copycat or a Miyazaki?" That's a whole other show. For the hank for the hanky sounds that multi head thing though blimey o'reilly it's amazing what a great sound yeah so cool so uh you know you can imagine that when the multi head thing came out to be able to get those two different delay times together it's great and if you listen to um uh setzer yeah setzer no? or yeah or Gil I mean, obviously gilmore the multi head thing um which is a phone honk for david gilmore <laughs> Uh, Nam Honk for Brian Setzer. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, obviously, the Gilmore thing uh, primarily was the Echo Rec, um, but it's still that, you know, the two different uh, heads, you know, playing back in different speeds. And the interval of those heads make a big, big difference. Um, and there's, of course, there's a mathematical equation, the... The, the, the Mobius strip. The Mobius strip. There's, there's the golden equation. What's that it called? That was a joke. Ratio. The gold, right. <laughs> it was a joke, the Mobius strip, by the way. Just for everyone, it was just a joke. Right. So, um, yeah, the golden ratio, there are people who have set the, the heads up sort of in that golden ratio. And yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. That sort of stuff. Yeah. So Be anyway. careful when you Google the golden ratio. <laughs> oh, okay. So um, the other thing, the other thing the Yaris 201 does yeah. is that it enables me to, to change the actual speed of the machine. Right. So you've got your high, low. Yeah. Two motor, speeds. Two speeds. So I can then uh, change the speed. There's your fidelity. It's so evocative, isn't it? I mean, you know, spiky bridge pickup clean. It brings playability back to that sound that you would think is just too aggressive to, yeah. to use. But did you notice as, as I, as the speed taped up, as the speed of the tape went up, the fidelity increased. Yes. You know, so 
because there's so much top end in this thing, you can really hear that, yeah. that fidelity come through. I also had the guitar volume rolled down a bit as well, so um, there's no treble bleed in this guitar. That would have been taken off some top end as well. Right. And yet it was there, presency, sure. nice sure. presency stuff. I guess we should listen briefly to it in comparison to the Echo Fix. Because yes. the Echo Fix is a modern remake of it, right? It, yeah, the Echo Fix, it is heavily, heavily inspired yeah. by it. Yeah. The Echo Fix has, uh, this particular version has more of an EP preamp in it. Right. Uh, like the sort of VB3 type nice. thing. Nice. Um, but yeah, so if we go to turn the Echo Fix on, the first thing you'll notice in the difference, so here's the Echo one. Here's the Echo Fix. Yeah, that's noisy. The boost is on. I'll just turn that off a sec and just let's have a listen to the... Significantly noisier. Significantly noisier. Right, the old one is. Yeah. yeah. So, if you have a play on this one. Okay. Feels like it's got that. That's got way more fidelity across the board. Yeah. So, first of all, it's brand new. Okay. Yeah. So this thing's knocking on thirty-five plus years old. Uh, so this brand new head. Not, brand not new quite tape. as old as me, don't you? <laughs> not quite as old as parts of me. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so that makes a massive difference. When you listen, go and listen to an old one of these, I mean, even when I go to Soundgas, I had four of these lined up and there's a massive difference between yeah, those yeah. four. And they've all been serviced, you know, uh, but this is the one that I, I liked. But these, the continuity with these ones will be much, much closer. Yeah. But again, great sounding preamp. If I turn the, if I turn the echo off, all right, have a play, mate. There's just that design in the preamp that's with these machines is so important, right? Uh, then you add the echo to that. That is not the point of today's show, but I think it's worth having just a quick comparison to show you where the next shows are going to kick off. Sure. Uh, yeah, vastly different thing. Yeah. So sure, you, you maybe you can uh, change the parameters of your delay pedal to sound more like it, and that's what we're going to get into in the next shows. Yeah, yeah, like how yeah, close yeah, yeah. can we get to how these things? Get to, yeah. 
Because there's there's a number of things we need to talk about. I've talked about the preamp. We need to talk about the compander circuit. That's a massive part of it. And it's um, variable, which is the problem. So talking a variable. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> this is my high watt custom tape echo. Do you remember the interview I did for, with Del Kasher? Yeah. Right. This was the first interview you asked me to go and do. Yeah. And I was, so is it in Denmark Street? Let's give Del Kasher. <laughs> so Del Kasher is a very significant figure in the development of the Wah Wah pedal. Yes. Because he was the first person to play it on record or something? Or did he invent it? Yeah, he was he was there at the time yeah, and yeah. working at working in the Vox factory and yeah. they originally used it. Uh, they didn't see a future with the wah pedal on on exactly. They it was a trumpet thing. So Del Kasha was the guy working at Vox, who said. He said, oh, "I think this is for guitars." So they said, "No, no, it's a trumpet." He said, well, if, if you're going to put it on trumpet, you may as well get Clyde McCoy. Oh, uh, that, okay, that's the story, yeah. Right? So, but, so he was he was there on doing all that stuff. Anyway, I interviewed him and Roger Mayer together. Yeah, Roger Mayer. Yeah. John's dad. Which was, which was awesome. <laughs> not, not John Mayer's dad. <laughs> and I, I was so, because I'd never interviewed anyone before, and I was so pleased that I went out and, and I bought this as a as a little as like memento what a great of the day, day. And, I, and I just thought I've got to buy something. I was walking into a guitar store. So in what year Street. was that? Oh boy, two thousand and six or seven. Uh, yeah, six. right. Fifteen years ago, I've never seen it working before okay. today. Right. <laughs> I used this live. It was on my pedal board for probably seven years. Right. It would sit on the top of my pedal board and the sound guys would come up and go, what's that? And I'd play it. It would blow their mind. It was the best I sounding. I think the toaster's broken, mate. Yeah. <laughs> it was, so it was the best sounding delay. It was magic. And then the tape started going. I thought, I'm going to change the tape. I'm going to buy some tape online specifically for this machine. So pull the top off, pull the tape out, chucked it in the bin. Grab the new tape, put it in there. Nothing. Wouldn't work. All I got was noise. I'm freaking out because I chucked the old tape away. So I started searching ferociously for any of this tape. Uh, and so, so the actual tape that you choose for this stuff is really, really important. Right. And it's hard to come by now. You didn't make some other er error. You didn't break something while you were doing it. It was the actual no, no. tape so that was it the was problem. The, so, so originally it was the tape that was the problem. Right. And then the guys at Soundgas, I took it up to them and said, please help me. And they found some tape. But I've had this fixed now by three people to try and get it back to how it sounded. Right. And it is nowhere near. Okay. Right. So, so here is... There's a couple of really cool things about this, but I'll, I'll go into it in a second. This is with the high watt. Thank you. 
Right. So I'll tell you what's really weird about that. It's the best sounding of the three. That's the best it sounded in 15 years. So when we turned it on originally, and Fraser will testify to this, it was going, it was the, the motor was going crazy. Well, um, Mike says with the tube tape echo, you, you've got to run it for a few minutes. Right. Okay. Well, I've been, I've been running this for hours and hours, just trying to work out what on earth is going on. So that sounded very quite stable then. Yeah. Right? Now, there's one thing about this that... I loved and the reason I was able to keep it on my board for years and years is because I had it in a loop, right. right? And you'll notice now the tape has stopped going around. Right. After, there's a little function on the back that says after it's not received any input on the signal, it'll turn the motor off right. and stop the tape from going around wearing down the heads. Okay. So now if you'll, if you'll um, I wipe the dust at the top and you'll have a look at the top here. We'll do a close up of this later. But as soon as I play a note, Watch this, ready? When does it stop? Oh, you stopped it. Uh, yeah, it takes, it takes about 10 seconds or so after right. it's not received anything. Now, this is multi-head. Oh, well. So, here is head one. Head two. And both of them. There you go. That is crazy, crazy cool. Okay, before we finish up, and we're going to just turn a load of stuff on and have a, a little experiment, I just want to hear a two head thing in there. Okay, so we set up a tape delay on here um, with two heads. Okay. So here's the high watt again. I think that sets up our next videos very nicely. Yeah. Clearly, when you head into your modern delay pedal and you're looking for the sound of tape, it's probably not immediately there. So the next videos are gonna be all about what do we need to do, A, with a specific type of tape delay emulation pedal, mm -hmm. such as um, Strymon... Volante, uh, El Capistan. El Capistan, yep. Volante, Catlin Bread Belly, Puck Deluxe, etc., etc., etc. All those pedals that are supposed to sound like tape. How close are they? Secondly, if you don't have that, if you just have a regular delay pedal, what can you do to make it sound a bit more like tape? Those are going to be the follow-up videos. Yes, indeed. We have established that even with these tape delays that we could put our hands on, mm -hmm. and there are many, 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 <laughs> many, 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 many tape delays. <laughs> many more out there. Uh, the sounds we're dealing with are, are radically different. Mm -hmm. So to talk about tape delay, you know, in a sort of glib O tape delay, it's as varied, it almost feels as varied as overdrive or yeah, yeah, many other, many, many other um, effects categories you could think of. What's the commonality? What do you feel when you're playing through the tape delays? That, is there a commonality you feel between them? What I'm, I'm, so what I definitely feel and hear is a kind of oneness with the sound. Right. So I want to play. The repeats don't get in the way yeah. very much. Yeah, yeah. There's a very specific way with how they filter, and it feels like that preamp in the unit itself becomes an integral part of your sound rather than something that sits on top of it. Yes, absolutely. So that that uh, the way the preamps are shaping everything, a lends to those repeats being you know filtered or whatever, but. It's, you know, even though the preamp is shaping your original guitar tone, mm. it's like you take it away. It's like, oh, hang on. 
You know, so it's doing something very special yep. to the si- signal, you know, straight away. It, yeah, it feels like part of the ecosystem rather mm, than invader yes. into it. Yeah, yeah. I think we had the longest repeats set up on the high watt there, probably. Mm, and mm. it's almost like the way it goes away is this bed o- on which you can play. Yeah. Whereas with the more modern pedals, if you set that level of delay and endless well not endless repeats but lots and lots of repeats it's just like clanging at yeah. you and yeah yeah so that's really what we what we should look at in the next yeah. videos is is how what does that really look like um in terms of features on the specific pedals and what can we do to change those pedals that are more available to more people and to get them closer get them to closer yeah, yeah great yeah great. that's cool i'm really pleased we did this yeah me too because i think it sets the context okay let's i think we should have some fun okay turn some stuff on and uh see what happens all right yeah. Awesome. pretty mega that'll work <laughs> i thought it was going to get a lot messier than that tape man yeah it's crazy brilliant cheers guys thank you so much for watching uh please subscribe if you haven't subscribed uh, also massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the uk and europe is and it's music of guildford uh and in australia would be pedal empire of brisbane queensland and there are links there are please click the description down check out the timings for the video and also click on the links helps us earn a bit of cash to run the show yeah uh that pedal show store.com where if, you can get yes if you want to feel comfortable or warm a nice new hoodie mm, yeah there's zip ones tasty. coming soon as well they're not here yet but uh anyway brilliant cheers guys have a great day and we'll see you soon bye <laughs>